What is good everybody, it's your boy Wolfie here man, welcome back to the tactic series for FIFA 20 man, today we are covering Chelsea, hopefully you guys did enjoy the first episode that I did with Real Madrid, and uh, let me know if you guys are using that tactic or not, uh, or if you're using your own custom one, let me know how it's going, we're moving on today man, Chelsea, Frank Lampard, Frank, Mr. Lamps, you know what I'm saying, I ain't gonna put that comparison out there, but I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it 100 with you, I was always Gerard over Lampard, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm just keeping it out there, you know what I'm saying? In career mode, I always used to sign um, Lampard, but because back in the day, I, you know, I have to keep true stories out here. Back in the day, I always used to use Liverpool on career mode, FIFA 09, FIFA 10, FIFA 11, I think as well. I was using uh, Liverpool for career modes. I don't know why. And um, I always used to sign Frank Lampard from Chelsea. But anyway, that's a different story. I like both of them, but I was just always a Gerard over Lampard. But Lampard and both Gerard obviously have made their transitions into management. Uh, Gerard is doing fantastic over Rangers, but we're concentrating on Frank Lampard, who had a very good season with Derby. Uh, his first season there, to me, was a success. He did very well. He proved that he could keep the squad together he proved that he has the man management skills of getting the best out of certain players he proved that he actually has some sort of system or some sort of tactical knowledge in his mind uh, to produce some sort of results so he you know if that was if derby was a proven ground then then frank lampard passed basically and he made the big leap over to the Premier League and he made the big leap to Chelsea. And Chelsea is a team that obviously Frank Lampard is a legend for and also a team that is very familiar with silverware and would like to still kind of keep that reputation. However, this season is definitely going to be a transition season for Chelsea as, you know, we look at their squad. Like I was talking about this on Twitter. So I'm looking at this squad right now. It just do look like a season four team in career mode. Like it just it just looks all over the place. You know, if you if you look at the team now in real life, you think to yourself, we are in someone's career mode in season five, and Donny Donny's Chelsea in that save did not sign any players. That's basically what happened. Of course, they got hit with the transfer ban, so they haven't been able to sign anyone. But what has been a very good outcome of this is the fact that the youth players are now starting to get some shine time, which is great. Christensen was kind of a, a key role or key key player, should I say, last season. So that's. You know, is what it is. Zoom has come back from Everton, although the hashtag free Zoom is still roaming around. He has been getting some game time under Frank Lampard. Uh, so he's now in the starting 11 after many years of going out on loan continuously. Don't know why, but he was. Uh, Mason Mount, of course, came back from, well, he's been working with Lampard for two years now. He worked with him at Derby and then he came back to Chelsea and now he's in the starting 11 even with a 785 overall uh, but Mason Mount is one of my favorite English prospects right now in football alongside Jadon Sancho just getting that out there of course Pulisic left my team Borussia Dortmund to sign with Chelsea he is now on the left hand side continuously for Chelsea as a starting uh, a winger and then we've got Abraham who for me I, I was saying this at the start of the season put my hand up and say I didn't think Donny was ready I did not think he was ready I, I questioned whether he had the uh, consistency to be, you know, a striker that could get Chelsea 20 plus goals per season. Right now, he's on course to doing it. He's having a very good start to the season. Pedro, I think his time is up, but he's doing pretty well under Frank Lampard right now, so we'll leave it as it is. Obviously, we don't need to go over Kante. We don't need to go over Jorginho either. Uh, those two guys have been pretty solid in my opinion. And of course, as Pilicueta as well is pretty solid as well. Um... But the amount of youth that are getting game time is great and if Frank Lampard hadn't have taken over I don't think we would have seen Mount in the starting 11, Zuma wouldn't be in the starting 11, Emerson although he's not a youth I don't think he would have started either, um, Abraham definitely would have gone back out on loan probably back to Aston Villa and Pulisic I reckon would have got loaned out. A lot of people are going to say no he probably would have stayed or he would have been on the bench, nope if another manager came in I reckon Pulisic might have got loaned out and uh, it would have been a up. It, or actually it probably would have been on the bench but it would have definitely been the starting lineup of Pedro and Willian they would have kept that same same lineup but anyway Frank Lampard the tactics what does he use well Frank Lampard actually presses which is a shock to me because pressing is definitely kind of more familiar in in German football of course a lot of managers now everywhere are starting to use like the pressing philosophy but Frank Lampard I just didn't expect it but of course he's been under various managers so you know he's obviously gained a few few little tips and ideas here but yeah it's a 
or well they say four three three but it's a four one two three or you can just say four three three if you don't want to overcomplicate things so what tends to happen is it's pretty much the same as like real madrid which we was talking for talking about in the last episode but again this is why there's so many gaps in chelsea's back four which is why they concede quite a fair bit so the the, the wingers tend to push up quite high um the wingers tend to drift in to allow space for the uh fullbacks to overlap then you've got mason mount who pushes up quite a bit as well kante doesn't really have a specific role donny's just up and down pause but donny is just up and down pause left right around the town funky clown like donny just does everything and georgina really just stays in this hole here and distributes the ball like i look at it now my mind looks at it now it's like Jorginho is the dot and that's where you start the triangle and uh, because of his passing and how good he is at passing and his vision etc he's capable of just pinging those those long balls pedro to pulisic or uh, giving it short to mount or kante kante does sometimes collect, come come short pause and collects it from Jorginho or if they play out from the back, collects it from Azpilicueta as well, etc. So, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. But Georgina does tend to just sit in this hole here. And uh, you're kind of left with a triangle of Georgino, Zuma, Christensen, sometimes Kante if he's here. So it's not really a triangle, but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, he would drift outside here. So, yeah, you really then kind of have five bodies going forward. The two fullbacks, um, sorry, six bodies, the two fullbacks, Pulisic and then Mount, Pedro um, and Abraham will be up. So you just have bodies going forward basically, which then leaves you exposed at the back, which is why Chelsea do concede so much. But anyway, so with this, we are going with the uh, join the attack on the fullbacks um, with the overlap run type. The wingers, we have got stay forward, cut inside, and everything else is pretty much left the same. With Jorginho, I have got balanced defending. I was going to keep it on cut passing lanes, but I thought I'd just leave it on balanced defending. Stay back while attacking, because um, that's what he does. And everything else has been left the same. Well, cover center has been changed as well. Kante, I've just left. I've literally not changed a thing. Mason Mount gets forward. Uh, stick to position, cover wing. But I'm going to change that to cover center. Um, actually, no, I'll leave that to cover wing. And that's pretty much it. The centre back's not been changed, and of course the keeper can't really be changed either. But it's what it is. Actually, we never had keeper instructions, did we? This is new. Is this new? Sweet Mac Is this new? Is this have I just discovered I think this is new. I think this is new. Anyway. So that is pretty much it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Abraham kinda does play as a false nine. Um I remember watching uh the game against Norwich. He kinda does drop deep. And kind of collects the ball and then drives it forward alongside Mount and then Pulisic going forward and Pedro going forward, etc. So you can change him as a false line or you can change him to whatever you feel fit. But there you go. And I've left him on stay forward because uh, we don't, you know, we, we need we need an outlet, if you will, when we uh, start the transition from defending to attack. So that is pretty much it in terms of the instructions. Now, in terms of the tactics here, I've got constant pressure because Chelsea do press quite a bit. Uh, the width I've left on free because they do tend to defend quite narrowly. And then the depth I've left on quite high because they actually do play high defensive line. Um, offensive I've left on balanced. Width I've left pretty much on balanced. And plays in the box I've left on four. And corners three, free kicks three as well. So that is pretty much it. I haven't made an alternative tactic for this. I've not made any other alternatives um, because I just I, I didn't really see one that I would probably use on Chelsea or Frank Lampard is using on Chelsea but if there is one then let me know in the comment section down below but that is pretty much it for this tactic there there really isn't anything here this is the default one that um, EA have done um, I haven't done anything at all I've not added another default tactic or a um, custom tactic should I say so yeah that's pretty much it um, I know someone's gonna say oh put me in a no Donny's on the bench I didn't even change nothing really this was the same starting lineup that Chelsea start with so that is pretty much it for this Chelsea tactic um you will have a lot of bodies going forward so again if you're one of those players on FIFA that tend to be very good going forward and you can find the quick passes the little gaps uh, that some people can't find because there are different types of players on FIFA there's some that can defend and there's some that are really good at attacking um 
or just really good at finding little holes and little slots for, slots in between the defence. This tactic is for those kind of attacking players. If you're a defensive minded kind of player, then this ain't for you, my guy. This is not for you. But if you're using a different tactic for Chelsea in career mode or in kickoff, let me know. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe. If you're new, I'm out of here. Peace.